features of a parabola. So we said yesterday that quadratics, what's special about quadratics? When it comes to, let's talk about the equation. When I look at an equation, how do I know it's quadratic? Degree two. Square. Degree two. So there's a square on top of the x, yeah. right? Which is the highest degree. How about of the graph? Downward though? Could it be downward? Mm-hmm. Is that quadratic? So if it opens like this, if it opens like this, is this quadratic? No. 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 The only two ways that quadratic will open is up or down. Okay? This is not quadratic. So the quadratic uh, graph would either open up or would open down. Okay? This shape, this here, is the inverse of the quadratic, which is not quadratic. It's the square root. Okay? We don't talk about this in this course. Okay? But this is not quadratic. What is it? It's the square root. So when I have plus or minus the square root of x, right, this is the shape of Okay, now, so in a graph, I know it looks like, uh, what, what did we say the name of the shape is? There is a name for it. Parabola. 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 Not U shape, it's a parabola. Okay, mm -hmm. now, uh, and then uh, in a table of value, how do you know it's quadratic? The second. One at a time. Constant. The second, second difference, difference is constant. Correct. Okay. So this is what we learned yesterday. Now today we're going to learn about these features, the features of this parabola. Okay. How can I identify these features? Because they tell me a lot about my equation. Okay. So first of all, a quadratic relation is modeled by a smooth, symmetrical curve known as a when I graph the quadratic, the parabola, I'm going to graph it on a Cartesian plane. So I have the x and the y. Okay? The Cartesian plane is your x and y, positive, negative, all of it. Okay? Now, if I'm looking at this graph, so this is an example of a quadratic. And then that quadratic, so this is your x-axis, and this is your y-axis. Okay, so if I'm asking you for the zeros, what points am I asking you for? The zeros on both lines. The zeros on, actually it's on one of the lines, not both of them, but do you know which one? It is the zeros on one of the lines. Do you know on which line? Is it the, zero, is it the points on the X or is it the points on the Y? Y. X, X. X or Y? Y. 
You see, <laughs> that's okay. It says zeros, so in this case there is multiple of them, right? So it's wherever the graph intersect the x-axis, okay? There's other names for that. So zeros is one of their names, and we'll talk about y later, okay? Um, the other names are x-intercept, okay? So the question might ask you also find the x-intercepts. They're asking you exactly for the same thing, okay? Uh, the question might ask you find the roots. That's another one, okay? They can't keep it straight. They have to make it uh, complicated, right? So they have to give us different names for it, for the same thing. Mm -hmm. So uh, the zeros, the x-intercepts, the roots, they all indicate the same thing. So I'm looking for whenever the graph intersects the x-axis, mm -hmm. okay? So in this case, the graph is intersecting the x-axis twice. That's the maximum number of times a quadratic will intersect the x-axis, okay? So a quadratic could also intersect the x-axis. How many times is it intersecting the x-axis now? Once. Once. Or sometimes None. it will not intersect at all. So if I have a graph that looks like um, this, for example, right? You see that it will not intersect, mm -hmm. okay? So the maximum number of intersection you can have is two points. Okay, like we see in this example. In other cases, you can have only one or you can have none, okay? Now, um, how do I identify these x-intercepts uh, or the zeros? What's the y value for these points? Zero. 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 Okay, the y value is zero. So we're gonna call these points odd and s just because Later, when we look when we look at the factored form, we have you, I know you guys some of you can't see this, but later when we look at the factored form, we have the letter R and S. So we're gonna identify them as, as R and S now because we're gonna connect it to that later. Okay? So the way I identify them, it will be so the x intercept. You can write them as R comma zero and s comma zero, okay? So this is a way to identify the x-intercept. So you can write them as points with the y value being zero, okay? So if I'm looking here, pretend this is at negative one and this is at three, okay? How would you identify these points? How would you write them? Well, if I ask you, what are your x-intercepts? You're gonna say my intercepts are, negative one, zero, and, no, and, three, zero, okay? It depends on your example. If your x-intercept are at seven and negative two, that will be negative two, zero, seven, zero, right? It depends on where it's touching the x-axis. So this is one way to, um, to indicate the x-intercept. The other way, so you get to pick one of them, okay? The other way is to write it simply as x equals to, and then r and s, okay? So you can write it as x equals to r and s. So in this case, I would write it as x equals to um, negative one and three. Okay, so you get to pick which method you want to use. Don't use both of them, don't mix and match. Pick one, either as a point format or as just x equals two. Don't put commas where the and is. There's a reason why I'm writing and, okay? Don't put cons. So, the zeros are your x-intercepts. So that's where the graph intersects or passes.
Any questions about the x-intercepts or the zeros? We're good to identify where they're located, how to find them. Now looking at this graph, I'm looking at the y-intercept. So how many y-intercepts do you have? One. And you will always only have one. Sometimes it's not visible. Sometimes you can't see it. You can't identify it. But then you will only have one. Okay? Where is that y-intercept? Yeah, it's right here. Perfect. So this is your x. This is your y. The graph is intersecting the y-axis at this point. Okay, so to identify the y-intercept, you're going to say, you're going to either give me a point. So what would your point be? Negative 4. So the x is negative 4 and the y is 0. So your x is going to be 0. Okay. And the y is going to be whatever that value is. Okay? Yeah. We're going to call that value for now the letter C. Okay? Because again, we'll talk about the standard form and it relates to the standard form. Okay? So the y, you can identify it as y intercept 0, comma, C. So in this case, it's going to be 0, comma, negative 4. You guys don't have to remember these letters. I'm just giving you the general form. Okay? Or you can identify it as y-intercept equals negative 4. Okay? You can pick either the point format or the um, uh, notation format. Can I just add a little thing for the top one? I forgot to write intercept for some reason. or crosses the y Are we okay with this, guys? Okay. Then we're moving to the vertex. Where would the vertex be located on this graph? Do you guys know what a vertex is? in the center? Where? Like, it's a point, right? Okay? So it's the point that... It's line of symmetry. So the line of symmetry is part of your vertex, okay? So your vertex is the actual point, okay? So if you're looking at the vertex, you see where you have either your minimum point or your maximum point, right? In this case, I have a minimum point, and in this case, I have a maximum point, right? So you see these points? These are called vertex, okay? So these are your vertex, okay? So they're either your lowest point or your highest point in the graph, okay? So a vertex is actually that point. So if I'm looking at this, my point is what? What's my x value? My x value. My x value. One and negative six. Right? So my vertex here 
is 1 and negative 6. So the vertex is the point. You should have an x value and a y value for it. Okay? Well, in this case also, my, x, my, uh, my vertex is 1 and negative 6, even though it's opening downward, but it's still 1 and negative 6. So the vertex is always indicated with the letter HK. Why? Because when we look at the vertex form, H and K are part of your vertex. So we'll talk about this in the next couple lessons. Okay? So we indicate the vertex with the letters H. So H is, is your X value of your vertex, and K is the Y value of your vertex. So the vertex is the lowest or the highest point you're going to have a parabola shape. It's going to be either the top point or the lowest. Are we okay with this? Now, Evan mentioned something called the axis of symmetry. When we drew earlier, I drew the parabola, and I told you, where would your line of symmetry be? Where did you guys say? In the middle, going which way? Vertical, right? So if I'm going to draw the axis of symmetry, I'm going to have to draw it in the middle, vertically. Where does it pass through? It passes through what value? It passes through the vertex, right? So the axis of symmetry is always going to pass through the vertex. Okay? Now, what is the value of this axis of symmetry particularly? One. one. If I go back here, what part of the vertex was one? Which is what? X or Y? X. X. So the axis of symmetry is the X value of the vertex. They're exactly the same thing. Okay? So, the axis of symmetry, I will, uh, when I ask for the axis of symmetry, you're going to write x equals 2. Okay? And then in this case, it's going to be 1. Right? Because as you can see, it passes through the x value of the vertex. If I'm looking at my letters, which one is the x, h or k? So that means x is always going to equal to h. Whatever h is, x is going to equal to it. So the description of the axis of symmetry, it's an imaginary, imaginary line. you can identify your vertex, you can right away identify your axis of symmetry. Thank you. 
thing for me, like something that's optimal. What are you looking for? Optimal means what? You get the best. The best. Yeah, yeah the best value, the best yeah. thing, right? Optimal means it's the best. Yeah. Okay. So when you're looking at a graph, where would your optimal be? At a parabola, where would your optimal be? It's the highest or lowest point, right? So it's also part of your vertex, okay? But because I'm looking at an optimal, I'm looking at the y value in this case. So the y value is your optimal. So in this case, it's a max or min? It's a min, right? It's a minimum value. And then in this case, it's going to be a... So to identify your optimal value, you're going to say it's a y value, right? So y equals to something. So in this case, it's going to be y equal negative 6. And then next to it, you're going to say it's either a min or a max. So you're going to tell me, is it a min or is it a max? Okay? So for this one, you're going to say it's a min. For this one, you're going to say it's a max. Because you see how it goes down? So that's your minimum value, and then it goes back up. So that negative 6 is your minimum value, is the lowest value you can get to, okay? If you have a graph that looks like this, when you get to that negative 6, that's your maximum value, okay? So think about a hill, right? You're going to get a maximum point, right, when it's opening down. So you're going to write the value, and then you're going to identify if it's a max or a max. Now, I'm going to take you back to this point one second. Sorry. So, what part of the vertex was negative 6? The optimal value? Yes. So, which one is it? The x or the y? The y. The y. And what's the value of the y in letter? K. K. So, it's always going to be y equals to k. Okay? Which is the value of the, the y value of the so here's one thing that you need to know. A vertex is made of two things. It's made of H and K. H is the axis of symmetry. You're going to hear me refer to the axis of symmetry as AOS. Okay, so if you see me writing AOS, that means axis of symmetry. And then K is your, I'm going to bring this up a little bit. K is your optimal value. Okay, so a vertex is made up of two things, the axis of symmetry and the optimal value. Now let's write a description for the optimal value. Okay? So I'm going to bring it back here. And I'm going to write the description for the optimal value. So it's how high... reaches in term of y value. So you have a minimum when it opens up. Remember when parabola opens up, you have a minimum, okay? And then you have a max when parabola opens
it says value. Mm -hmm. Y value. That's a Y value. 